Hi guys, so it is the close of another gorgeous spring day in the end times in paradise in Garfield, Texas, and I'm doing exactly what I was doing this time last evening, which is looking next door at my, uh, it's now Thursday, March 29th, 2018, and I'm doing what I do every night, which is watching the window of my next door neighbor, Larry, who has, uh, as I mentioned last night, pretty much walked in that trailer, I'm thinking, at least two years ago, shut the door, and pretty much has not re-emerged uh, since I don't know how long. I have no clue what that old man does in there. And so the only way I know, again, that he's alive is when the light comes on. And so while I'm waiting for the light once again, uh, the story I told about Larry last night uh, reminded me of this story when I was a clueless moron real estate agent. I don't talk much about those days because they generally embarrass me. But if I had to pick one of the most embarrassing stories, the, the one that uh, I, I have not shared this story many times in my life. It is one that still haunts me. It, uh, it happened right about the time, surprisingly enough, uh, when I was making the decision to get the hell out of real estate, right? During my awakening that uh, perhaps uh, what I was doing with my life was not the right thing to be doing with my life and I needed a radical change, which is exactly the point I'm at now, exactly 10 years later. It was, it was pretty much 10 years ago, possibly today this could have happened. It was sometime in the spring of 2008 uh, right around the time I was uh, getting into uh, getting into Terrence McKenna and doing mushrooms and ayahuasca and uh, whatnot, that uh, I received a phone call. Sancho, let the little squirrely go to bed. Sancho is this poor squirrel. Uh, anyway, so I received a phone call from my buddy, uh, Dance and Dawn. Dance and Dawn lived out in uh, this little area of town uh, outside of Austin, southwest of Austin, called Oak Hill, uh, about 10 or 12 miles from downtown Austin. 10 years ago, Oak Hill, uh, Texas looked a lot more like Garfield still looks like today and not nearly as much like Oak Hill does today which is a lot like the uh, I don't know probably the San Fernando Valley in Southern California while Garfield has managed to somewhat resist the onslaught Oak Hill has been uh, completely buried so uh, of course I was taking full advantage of this uh, as a real estate agent, the, uh, this new highway, Southwest Parkway, had recently opened and all of these new subdivisions and office buildings were moving south and west. And of course, uh, being a realtor in uh, South Austin, Texas, I was taking full advantage of the rape and pillage of Oak Hill, Texas. And so Dance and Don was one of my picking party buddies. Uh, we were friends socially. He was a stand-up bass player. I am a harmonica player. He used to have a uh, first Friday picking party out at his house out in Oak Hill, which was still, it's particularly the, the street he lived on, it, it still felt almost rural out there. He, most of the lots were around an acre 
and whatnot, uh, kind of like they are out here in Garfield. So anyway, I received a, a call from uh, Sancho. Come on now. I'm trying to talk. Okay, Larry's light has come on. I know that Larry is alive. So anyway, uh, I received a call from Dance and Don that his neighbor across the street, Alice was her name, I still remember this lady's name, Alice, uh, had a for sale sign, a real estate sign out in front of her house. It was this small little, I think just a two bedroom, one place, uh, did have a big garage and workshop on about an acre of beautiful land. Uh, I don't know why she didn't just sell directly to Dance and Don, but anyway, she was going through a realtor, so <coughs> Dance and Don wanted me to uh, help him buy this house. So he enlisted my help, and I was happy to do it. So uh, I went out there and, uh, you know, met the seller and whatnot and looked around. So anyway, the seller was somewhat in the same position as my next door neighbor Larry. Uh, the fact that she had moved out there, I believe that she and her husband had moved out there. Uh, they'd been out there for like 25 years. They had built, the, they had bought this piece of land. Uh, might have even been longer. Hell, uh, she was 82. It could have been that part I don't remember. It was probably actually quite a bit longer. I'm trying to think how old that house was. Anyway, at least 25 years. Possibly 35 or 40 years they had built, she and her husband had built this, uh, had built this, their, their little home in the country uh, from scratch and had uh, very carefully, you know, developed the yard over decades, it was this beautiful acre of land uh, that the house sat on. You know, I mean, she knew every uh, every single tree that she and her husband had planted. They put in the gardens, and you know, you can imagine this their little uh, their little American dream that they had built. Well, her husband had died. Uh, a couple of years before, kind of like Larry's wife did here in, in Garfield. And her children, she had two children who had been raised out there and they had grown up and, and moved, to, I don't know whether they lived in Austin or some other city or moved completely away from Texas. Anyway, her children had grown and gone on about their lives. Uh, with their own lives and their own families, and left uh, and left mom to uh, to continue to putter around in her little home on her beautiful piece of ground, and so anyway, her children had gotten it in their mind that Alice was no longer able to take care of the place, and they had reached the decision over her vehement protest that they were going to put her in one of these assisted living facilities. Well, I met this woman. She was clearly, that this woman was clearly uh, physically, mentally uh, able to take care of this place. Uh, she was at 82. She was a woman to be reckoned with. There was absolutely no reason that I saw that this woman uh, needed to be living in an, one of those goddamn assisted living uh, facilities. But anyway, her, her uh, kids had gotten this into their minds, and they, and, and they had forced her, even though it was her place, it wasn't theirs. I mean, they were going to inherit the place or the money that she was going to make from selling it. She probably paid $3,000 for it. And now I don't know what I don't know what the price was one hundred fifty, one hundred seventy thousand dollars that they were going to inherit. Uh, so anyway, they ganged up on mom and uh, told her, "Mom, it's time for you to move from the homestead." 
and she told me uh, right there when I met her. She was a very sweet old lady. You know, she she was nothing but nice to me. She had no attitude towards me being a, a real estate agent, and she was kind of glad to know that uh, that Dance and Dawn, her neighbor, uh, was going to be the one wanting to buy it. So, uh, but she told me uh, in no uncertain terms that she was not going to this assisted living facility, that she had no intention of it. And, and I said, you know, well, well, what do you mean? I mean, where are you going to go when you leave here? And she says, I'm not leaving here. And, and I said, well, then, well, 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 Alice, you're selling your house and Don is buying it. And she goes, well, I am leaving here. But kind of what Larry told me a few weeks ago, she goes, when when I leave here, they are going to take me out feet first. You know, this is kind of a joke that old people, this, this bitter joke. And so she was, and so, you know, I've heard this line before. I say I just heard it from Larry three weeks ago that uh, I'm not leaving here. Uh, and that they're taking me out of here feet first. And she's, and she stated this just matter of factly. And so, uh, anyway, so we started the, the loan process. Everything was going smoothly. Uh, it was probably, you know, a 45 or 60 day, uh, you know, escrow period while everything, you know, the loans and the inspections and the appraisals, all that shit. And so I would drop in and, and you know, and I was the buyer's agent. I was Don's agent. So I would just drop by occasionally to say hello to Alice just to make sure everything was coming along. And, and, and I noticed there was absolutely no movement of her packing up this house. The closer and closer that we got towards the end of the deal, that she, that all of her knickknacks that she'd gathered for decades, her entire lifetime, all the photos of her dead husband and her children uh, were hanging on the walls and uh, we were getting closer and closer to the end of this deal and I was calling her agent and saying, you know, I've got a little bit of a concern here that I don't see any movement uh, on, on your client's part and she was saying, don't worry about it. Uh, Mr. Mitchell, that uh, that uh, her kids will take care of it, and the movers will come out there. They'll be in and out of there in one day. So don't worry about it. So I said, oh, well, don't worry about it. So it, it came time for what's called the final walkthrough of the property. I, rem I remember it was on a it was on a Wednesday. I don't know why I remember this. On a, on a beautiful spring evening on a Wednesday. So we went for the final walkthrough and the seller's agent was nowhere to be seen. So it was just, uh, it, it was just me uh, in between Alice and, and Dance and Don. But they had been neighbors for years. So they were friends. So it was just the three of us. And we did this uh, walkthrough where she basically took us on a final tour of the place where Don could, you know, any last minute questions he had for her and everything. And, uh, and uh, she, she spent a long, usually these walkthroughs last 20 or 30 minutes. Well, we were there for like two hours. This uh, Alice, uh, it's just like she didn't want to let us go. And, I mean, she gave us the full tour. I mean, it was, uh, it, it was everything uh, that you would ever want to know about that property. And, uh, I mean, everything. Uh, the story of every rose bush. Uh, every one of her, her dogs uh, that had been buried on that property, it, it was clear that this woman loved, you know, every inch of this place. It was her entire life. And this one, and so it was finally getting dark like it is now. 
Uh, and, and, and she reiterated that, you know, we were kind of noticing that nothing had been, that she hadn't started packing up. And, and, and I was making a few as subtle comments as I could since this was her agent's job, not mine, and she reiterated the fact right there that she was not going anywhere. That, uh, once again, she made this statement, which, uh, which was this uncomfortable, ironic joke that the only way I'm leaving here is when they carry me out of here uh, feet first. And and uh, and Don and I were were, were kind of glancing at each other, going, "This is getting a little bit weird." And so anyway, uh, this and so this deal it was it was Wednesday, and, and and this thing was supposed to close by Friday, and she was going to be out that weekend. the The moving van was going to be there, and they, and her kids were coming in for the weekend. They were going to pack up the house. They were going to be out on Saturday, and Don could start moving in on Sunday. I mean, he was just going to use it as a rental, so there wasn't any big hurry. So uh, I bid Alice farewell, and uh, just, uh, you know, it was, it was an uncomfortable feeling, obviously. Uh, so I bid th this sweet old lady uh, who, you know, who clearly was able to take care of this place. Uh, Don and I bid her good evening and farewell, and I was sitting around waiting for my damn commission check to come in on Monday. You know, I was getting ready to pick up three or four e thousand easy dollars for this sale. Uh, I didn't have to do a damn thing. Uh, someone put up a for sale sign, and the buyer uh, called me and said, "Hambone, I want to, I want to buy this house and from the lady." I, I didn't do a damn thing uh, <coughs> to make that three or four thousand dollars. And so anyway, we went home. It was, it, it was, as I say, right about this time, dark uh, on a Wednesday evening. And that's the last I ever saw of Alice. And, and I think you know where the story's going. This, this... This is the, the, the reason... <coughs> Give me a second here, guys. This is the reason I've never told this story. In ten fucking years that I've been carrying this around with me. You know the ending of the story. I got a I got a call from Don the next day, and and he sounded just like like fuck. And I said, "Brother, what's the matter?" And, and he goes, "You know, the, the, he he was crying." And and he goes, "Hambone, the 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 fucking ambulance just pulled out." And I said, "What do you mean?" I thought he was talking about his house. I said, who the fuck has heard it? He goes, no, not. He goes, it just pulled out of, uh, it, it, it pulled out of Alice's house. And I said, what the fuck are you talking about? And uh, he said, she took herself out last night. I said, you're fucking kidding. And he goes, brother. He goes, it's just as she said, they carried her out feet first. Loaded her up in the ambulance and hauled her out of here. And it was about that time 
that I decided I had taken a serious fucking wrong turn in my life. And that real estate sales was no place for a pussy like me. As I say, this was all in the in the time that uh, I was I was moving out anyway, and uh, and and I've had to live with myself ten years. I don't know. I might have told that story two or three times in ten years. We're fucked, people. Anyway, uh, with that, I'm going to enjoy this gorgeous moonrise. The little dog is ready for his dinner and to go to bed. And we have a gorgeous moon on the rise here on this beautiful spring night uh, in the end times in paradise. And uh, I'm going to go pour a margarita and watch this beautiful moon rise. I guess we're going to have a blue moon. Is the blue moon tomorrow night or Saturday night? A blue moon in the end times. Get out there and enjoy it while you still can before they come and drag you out feet first. As I look at the moon, sip a margarita, and wonder what in the fuck the next chapter holds in the life of your old depressed collapsitarian as the winds of change blow through the cottonwood. Bye guys.